hello uh, welcome to today's video and uh, our task today is to connect uh, logo plc with ignition scatter software so uh, this is just a simple wiring diagram to set a motor you can see here so you just have so you have a mcb you have a contactor and you have a three-phase induction motor then you have start and stop button so this is a simple uh, wiring diagram to start a motor or basically what is called direct online motor starter so probably you want to do away with the hard wiring and you want to incorporate a plc or rather a soft plc like logo soft or logo plc so uh, let's say you are given a task uh, of installing this and uh, after the installation you want to create a human machine interface uh, just to monitor and supervise your your system so our task today is actually to know how we can use ignition to create the hmi the hmi screen for logo to create the hmi screen for logo so probably you know what logo plc is this is logo plc so this is the logo plc all right this is the logo plc here so the first thing is to translate the the wiring diagram uh the control circuit or part of it this here so you have to translate the control circuit part of it into a ladder diagram so this is called the relay diagram or the relay circuit or the relay logic so you have to translate this into into ladder diagram all right you have to translate this into ladder diagram and this is simple this is what is called the latching circuit the simple so let me just delete this logo first okay for this task here for you to successfully connect a logo to ignition you have you must have the uh the hardware all right you must have the hardware that is uh, uh let me just show you that so you must have this this is the the soft plc this is logo the soft plc so you have to have this so we have to translate this here so i just have to translate this very fast let me use this here uh, okay so let's translate this together so i'll put a positive rail and a negative rail so these two represent the power rails all right then i use the red to represent the positive and black to represent the negative there so let's translate this so you can see here from this diagram here we have tapped one face that is the blue face then you have connected it to stop button so we are assuming that this positive here this is the blue face or this is rather the the power so we are connecting it to a stop button you have to uh, realize that stop button is normally closed it's normally closed by default so that means that I have to use normally closed contact here I have to use normally closed contact there then after that it is connected to it is connected to start to start button it's connected to start button and the start button is normally open it's normally open by default so we have to represent this start button with a normally open contact there then after that you can see just follow the circuit just follow the diagram here after that here from uh, terminal 3 to terminal 4 that represent normally open then it is taken to the coil so if coil of contactor is a1 a2 okay so a1 a2 that represent the coil or the contactor we know that contactor is a electromechanical switch it's an electromechanical switch so it uses uh, it uses magnetism so we have a coil here that needs to be energized so a1 a2 represent the coil so i have to represent that coil with this 
there so there let me just connect them there then something else from a1 from a1 we have also auxiliary contacts of the contactor that is normally open and normally closed so the terminal 1 here and terminal 2 of the contactor here represents normally open okay represent the normally open auxiliary contacts of, uh, of the contactor so from a1 we have tapped it to 1 so this is a normally open so we have to represent this with a normally open so a normally open there then it is from a1 so this is a1 here so this is a1 so we have connected it to normally open here So this is A1. A1 is connected to terminal 1. That is normally open. Then it is terminated here as terminal 2 back to start. As terminal 2 back to start. So terminal 2 here then back to then back to start. There. And that is our that is the ladder diagram. So we have translated the the relay logic into ladder diagram. So this is the ladder diagram. So you can just name this. Uh, you can name this as a st stop. Then you can name this as start. Uh, start. There. Then this is uh, this is the coil. This is the coil contactor coil. This is also contactor coil. Contactor coil. So that's it. So this is what is called the ladder diagram. You can translate this into. FBD that is function block diagram so you can come here into function block diagram then you realize that this start and call this represent an OR block all right this represents an OR block so you can use OR block there this so then you can have inputs Then after that, this is ended with the stop. This is ended with the with a stop. So we are taking this. So we have to end with that here. Uh, that's it. So we can connect this here. And then uh, here, this is OR gate, or basically the OR function. So we have the start and we have the coil. All right, we have the start and we have the coil. So you can represent them with the normally open and normally closed. there uh, then we have normally closed here and you're done so you can either use uh, the FBD or you can use the ladder there 
then this represents the coil. So we have the coil here. So you can add the coil there, then you are done. Then you are done. But remember, for connection here, we need the actual, the actual software for logo, and that is Logo Soft Comfort. Okay, that is Logo Soft Comfort. So I will go ahead and develop this, uh, this letter diagram inside uh, Logo Soft Comfort. All right, inside Logo Soft Comfort. So let me open Logo Soft Comfort. So this is Logo Soft Comfort, and this is a uh, the software you use to program uh, logo PLCs. So this is just an empty network. But remember, this is a real project we are doing here. So we have the real hardware that is PLC, uh, the logo PLC. So instead of having the diagram mode, we'll go to network project. So in network project, we need to add uh, the device. We need to add the device. So press here on add new device. Then you have to select the type of hardware you have. So you, ha you must know the version of your logo. So me, I'm using a logo 8.1 and 8.2. So I have to select this. Then you have to check the IP address of your logo. So let's go back here and check that. So we can check the so we can check the, the, the network. So the first thing stop. So let's stop the logo from running. So you can see the IP address is 192.168.0.0.0.2. So that IP address must correspond with the device IP address here. So it is 192.168.0.2. The subnet mask is 252525. 252525, then 0. Gateway is 192.168.0.1. So the information here or the configuration is right. The information or configuration is right. Then you have to click OK. Then you have the device there. So we have the device there. So that's the device. So it means that we have connected the logo PLC with our local PC. So I've connected the logo with my laptop here. So you can see that. So the next thing is to develop the the ladder diagram, all right? Let's develop the ladder diagram. So I'll use FBD, that is function block. So remember, I just have two inputs, that is start and stop. So I come here, then I can select. So you have to scroll down to basic functions. Then I have to select this. Uh, let me select the the OR function here. So that's the OR function. Uh, let me zoom this so you can see clearly. So that's the OR function. Remember, we have to add uh, the start the start button here so you can select here go uh, go up to digital then select input so you can select input but something very important is that we want to start our system remotely okay we want to start our system remotely so it means that we cannot use the real input 
that will take the real address of the logo PLC all right so I cannot use the real input so I rather use the network input so I'll go ahead and use the network input because with the network input I will be able to start and stop the system remotely so I'll select network input so this will represent our our start button so this is input one start button then I just connect it there then remember this output output of all function is anded okay so we have to add the and function so that's uh, just a I minute mean, let me just delete this guy Let's do this guy there. Then remember, a stop button is normally closed, so I'll have to double press this. I'll have yes. So this means that it is inverted. This pin is inverted. Okay, it means that this pin is inverted. Then I have to use again another another network input then connect it there so it means whatever uh, whatever is coming out of this network input is inverted then fed into this uh, this block here the under block and uh, then we have the coil so the output so remember the output is real all right the output is actual it's real so you have to select the real output here and you can see the address is Q1 then you just have to connect it here then this you have to connect it here so instead of using that I have to uh, to cut that so I can use this here there and we are done so that is our program so that is our program so something very important here is that you must note your inputs and outputs that's very important you have to note your inputs and outputs so the first input here is v0.0 v0.0 that is n n1 then we have another v0.0 but n12 and this is n11 then we have one output which is q1 one output which is q1 so after that we have to create the server uh, the server okay you have to create the server because remember the HMI is just a client it's just a client so we need to create a server so here we have two options we can use the module bus or we can use the step 7 so when you press here on settings when you press on settings and you go to Modbus address space. This is very very important. Modbus address space. So in Modbus address space, if you are using the real, the real input that is I, then the range is from one to twenty-four. So you can have around twenty-five inputs. Then it is mapped. Modbus address is discrete input. You have to specify this it's as discrete input. When you are using Q again the range is from 1 to 20 so you can have 21 outputs and you have to specify this as coil and look at this the modbus address is 8193 that is very important so actually the first address here will be 8193 that is the first output address when using modbus then look at v the range is from 0 to 850 and it's a coil and the address starts from the address space 
transform 1 to 6808. 1 to 6808. That is also very important. Then after that, let's go back. So you have to right click on this uh, virtual PLC here. This is logo, this virtual PLC here. You have to right click on it. Then go to add server connection. Go to add server connection. Then select Modbus connection. So in Modbus connection, look at this. This is port 502. The IP address is 192.6802. So this information is very important. Then we need to add the data transfer information. So the first input is V0.0 and it's a coil. Remember? It's a coil. And uh, the address starts from 1. So the address space is 1. So again you can add another row. Yes. Then the address of this will be 2. Then you can add another row, but now we want the output Q. It's just one. But now the address of this is 81. It's 8193. 8193. You have to specify that. 8193. Then let me just delete this row here. So that's it. That's all we need there. Then you can just save this. So you can save this. And look at now here. This is now the Modbus connection. This Modbus server. Okay. So we are done with uh, with the logo. So the next step we move to ignition. The next step we move in to ignition. So in ignition, you have to open the ignition gateway. So go to your search engine. So this is your search engine. Then you can type localhost 8088. Okay, 8088. So that's how you can access ignition gateway. Then go to configuration. In configuration, let me just log in here. So in configuration, scroll down to OPC, OPC UA connection, OPC UA here, then go to device connection. Then let's just create a new device. Then remember the type of connection is Modbus and it is Modbus TSP and remember the port was 502. So you can scroll down, then we can select Modbus TSP, that is transport communication, I mean transport control protocol. So this is, you know, you might wonder why uh, why are we using Modbus? Remember, Modbus TSP is a it's a Ethernet communication. If you look at the Ethernet layers, let me just take you through that. This is Ethernet model. So with Ethernet, we have five layers. That is the physical layer. Like right now, my logo PLC is connected to my laptop. Uh, using Ethernet cable, so the physical layer is Ethernet. Then you have the network layer. This is the Internet protocol, the IP. That's why when using uh, Ethernet, you have to specify the IP address. Then after that, you go to transport layer. So this Modbus it uses uh, TSP as the transport layer. So with the transport layer, TSP is for when you are transmitting. Uh, uh, let me say not large amount of data okay not large amount of data and it is connection oriented you have to maintain the connection between the two devices then uh, other than uh, TSP you have you have UDP this is user datagram protocol this is connectionless if you want to uh, transport a lot of data like what uh, maybe in video games so you probably use UDP. Then we have the application layer here. So the application layer is now where you can decide to use the Modbus protocol. You can decide to use the Profinet protocol. Okay. That's why we are using Modbus. I hope that is clear. 
So you have to select mode bus TSP, then just hit OK or next. After that, the device name, let's just call it logo HMI. Let's just call it logo HMI. Then host name. This is very important now. Host name has to be the IP address of your logo. So let's let's just confirm our IP address. It's 168. 192.168.0.2 I guess that is the correct IP address, yes. Then just hit OK. Order create new. So we have we have our device here. It's called Logo HMI Modbus, and you can see the status is connected. That means that we have connected Ignition and Logo uh, PLC successfully. Then after that, we just need to add the addresses here. So you can press on More Address. So you can see this space is empty here. This space is empty. So we can add row. Then remember our first input. We have the first input, so let me just call it input. The prefix to be input. Then start, let's just say one. Stop, let's just say uh, two. Uh, then it's a coil. Remember, it's a coil. Then the address is the address is one. Then I can add another row to represent the output. So I can call it output. Output. Uh, then let me just say 8193. Then and also to be 8193 because I just want one input. Then input here is also a coil. Then you have to represent it with the Modbus address 8193. Then save. That's it. So that's it. So the next step, then we move to Ignition Designer. Ignition Designer Launcher. Ignition Designer Launcher, where we develop or we try to come up with uh, the HMI or the graphic. So I will go to Ignition Designer. So in Ignition Designer, we need to create new project. So we need to create new project. So I'll just hit here on new project. And let me call this project logo HMI. Logo HMI. Then title also. Title also logo. Let's just call to title to be logo. Then you can leave everything as default. Then create new project. So this is our project. So here we have to create new window. So in Ignition we have three windows. That is main window, pop-up window, and docked window. So I just create main window and call it main. Then create. So this is the area. This is where you can develop the HMI or the graphics. So uh, let me just go ahead and add a triangular here. Then let me give it a background color. So come to customizer, then style customizer. Then you can fill. You can go to visible here, then fill it with a paint. Then instead of that, let's just give it. 
instead of that let's just give it uh, give it another color uh, let me just say that there then I just have to come to components here then I have to add the induction motor so scroll down scroll down to motors mm, motors here then you can select this here mm, then just drag it here okay so that's our motor then we have to let's just create a new folder here and let's call this folder logo HMI so this is the folder where we'll have to add the OPC OPC tags so logo HMI so we have logo HMI here Ah, just a minute let me just delete it here I don't want it there logo HMI there uh, okay fine so inside this folder we have nothing actually so you have to create a new tag so come to new standard tag then select OPC tag so when you select the OPC tag then you have to create a new tag so the new tag will be the start button uh, start uh, start button and uh, the data type should be boolean then OPC server should be ignition ignition OPC server then uh, OPC item path we can select ignition OPC UA then you go to devices then you see the devices here remember our device is logo HMI then you go to we have to select the first input so we only have two inputs so I'll go with the first input here that is that to represent the start then OK so you see now we have one tag there so again I have to create another tag for stop OPC tag then this should be stop stop button there and then uh, let me just change this then I have to select uh, no, devices here I have to select logo HMI then the second input then we are done there then finally I have to create the final track that is the coil the coil or the motor itself so again this is boolean let's just call it motor motor then server is ignition of PC US hour then let's go to ignition then select HMI then select the output there then apply then we are done so look at this it means that they are connected there's no error or what is called the configuration error you can see it's good 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 so this is the start so you just have to drag it here then come to uh, control then it's a two-state toggle button okay so this is a two-state toggle button then you just have to customize it so instead of having off we want to have uh, start so the text should be start rather than off a uh, start then when it is off I just want the background to be uh, black yeah then when it is on then just green then start 
then OK. So this is our start. Then you can place it here. Then you can create stop. Let's drag it here. Control to stay toggle. Then let's customize this also. Then let's just call this stop. Let's just call it stop. Then the background should be black. Then here should be stop. And should be red. Background color should be red. There. And we are done. Okay, then we have to create a display. Oh, just a minute. A display for the motor. So display. Then uh, we just have to create multi-state indicator. So when it is on, it should be green. When it is off, it should be red. So let's customize this. Okay, let's customize this. So, let me just delete this. So, okay. So, when it is off, we want the background color to be to be red. And let's just say off. Then uh, when it is on, we want the background color to be green, then it should indicate on. On there. And that's it. So you can come and place it here. And we are done. So you can save this. You can save the project. Then we have to upload. Go back to your logo. Then we have to upload this program into our PLC. So just a minute here. So we have to upload this program to our PLC. So we have to go online. So going online is checking the connection between uh, between the uh, the PLC and our uh, and our laptop. You can see it is ticked here, showing that the connection is okay. Then you have to upload this program. So I just have to upload. Uh, I mean download, not upload. Download. Just select like this. Uh, then. You can see that it is just downloading, then change to run mode. Yes. There. Then we are done. So when I press that button, let's see what will happen here. So I have to go back to. So. I have to enable full read and write. Then when I press that button. Okay. So see this. So when I press that button, you can see that the start button is indicated as changing color. But something interesting is that our motor is not running. Our motor is not running. So let's configure that out. So I guess the problem is fixed. So we have two uh, buttons here, start and stop. 
So start is to start the motor. Stop is stop the motor. So let me press on start. So you can see the our motor is running now. Our motor is on, running. Even if I release the start button, the motor is still running. What about if I press stop? You can see the motor is off. So and uh, that's how you connect ignition with ignition with the logo but something interesting is that you don't just want to develop this then leave your client at this point because you can't leave your client at you at the designer at ignition designer so we have another software inside ignition designer called let me just open that software just a in a minute So I'm saying that you can you can't leave your client at this point because he will be able to interfere with the inputs and outputs. He will be able to interfere with the tags. So you have to leave your client at what is called the client vision software. Okay, this is the client vision software. Then I'll just add application. I'll select that. Select the gateway then i will add logo so this is called the the client vision window it's called ignition vision client window okay so within this window your client cannot interfere with your programs he cannot interfere with your inputs or your tags. All he can do is just to start, maybe stop. So this is the main window. So this is the ignition vision client window. So this is where you leave your client at. So after developing, after transforming uh, the relay circuit into ladder diagram, you have programmed your logo. So your system is running. Then you develop the HMI. You commission that and you leave your client at this window it's called ignition vision client all right so thank you so much uh, this is the end if you have any question leave leave it at the comments